The Islamic State claimed responsibility for terrorist attack in Russia. The Islamic State terrorist group claimed responsibility for the terrorist attack at Crocus City Hall. American officials confirmed to the New York Times the authenticity of the group's statement. In March, the United States received intelligence that an ISIS affiliate in Afghanistan, known as ISIS-K, was planning an attack on Moscow, sources told the New York Times. One American official said that ISIS members are actively operating in Russia. A U.S. official told CBS News that the U.S. has intelligence to support ISIS's claim of responsibility for the attack and Washington has no reason to doubt those claims. The New York Times also writes that in addition to the public warning on March the 7th, American officials privately informed their Russian counterparts about intelligence indicating an attack was being prepared. Investigator Christo Grozev reported that the U.S. Embassy warned Russian intelligence services about receiving certain evidence of the preparation of an ISIS-K terrorist attack. According to him, the Russian side responded that the information provided by the Americans was not specific enough. After this, as Grozev notes, there were still arrests in Russia of certain members of ISIS cells. That is, the FSB decided after all that they knew who to arrest and they started making these arrests. Grozev said, the Kremlin media reported that the suspects could be Tajik citizens, but the country's foreign ministry called this fake news. Events were cancelled in some Russian cities. Defense intelligence of Ukraine stated that the terrorist attack was a deliberate provocation by Putin's regime that had been anticipated by the international community. Mykhailo Podolyak, advisor to the head of the Ukrainian president's office, stated that Ukraine had nothing to do with the attack. The command of the Russian army will redeploy some Russian troops from the front in Ukraine to defend Belgorod due to frequent attacks and shelling. A source close to the Kremlin told Bloomberg about this. The Moscow Times reports that since the beginning of March, the Belgorod region of the Russian Federation has been subjected to regular shelling and attacks by sabotage and reconnaissance groups of Russian volunteers. At least 20 people were killed and about 100 were injured. The most intense impacts occurred in mid-March. On March 16, the city came under fire twice, and on March 14, three times. The publication notes that, despite the shelling and missile danger, the mayor of Belgorod, Valentin Demidov, called on residents not to refuse to visit polling stations for the Russian presidential elections held on March 15 to 17. Earlier, the comments portal reported that Ukraine will not conduct peace negotiations with Russia, since the Russian Federation is a terrorist country, and terrorists are not talked to, they are destroyed, said NSDC Secretary Alexei Damilov. The NSDC secretary added that all civilized countries of the world should, following Ukraine, recognize the Russian Federation as a terrorist country. What kind of peace negotiations are there with Russia if this country is an aggressor? This is a terrorist country. No one talks to terrorists in the modern world. They are simply taken and destroyed, Danilov said. In addition, the comments portal reported that Polish President Andrzej Duda said that in the near future Russia could restore its military potential in order to attack NATO countries in 2026. The president of Poland believes that due to the threat from Russia, NATO should increase the required threshold for countries' defense spending from 2% to 3% of GDP. Ukrainians use new tactics against Russians, enemy confused and their losses increase rapidly. The war in Ukraine continues and the Ukrainian soldiers use a new tactic at the front amid a lack of ammunition. They strike with artillery and then destroy the remnants of the enemy forces with the help of FPV drones. Such drones cannot become a literal replacement for shells, but they can supplement traditional artillery and alleviate the reducing but constant shortage of ammunition. Among the defenders of the Ukrainian state, Forbes writes, One of the Ukrainian tactics that we observe is that accurate artillery fire strikes a large Russian assault group and scatters its troops and hardware. Disorganized, survivors taking cover beyond the protection of their radio jammers and air defense equipment become easy targets for FPVs which attack isolated soldiers and hardware, the article says. 
The publication notes that while previously a battery of Ukrainians could fire 10 shells to hit a Russian assault group, now it can use only 5 shells and coordinate its actions with FPV drone operators to eliminate the enemies. The journalists added that the Ukrainian army's shell famine deepened at the end of 2023 and a network of hundreds of small workshops across our country began producing more combat drones. According to the publication, they can now make more than 50,000 drones, which apparently far exceeds Russia's own production of effective drones. In the worst days of Ukraine's artillery crisis last month, Kyiv's batteries were firing just 2,000 shells a day, a fifth as many shells as Russian batteries were firing. The ammo gap is one reason why the Ukrainian garrison in Avdiivka in eastern Ukraine ultimately had no choice but to retreat in mid-February, delivering to the Russians their only major battlefield win of the winter. But the ammo gap now is shrinking and Ukrainian brigades are holding the line along the front while inflicting devastating and unsustainable losses on attacking Russian regiments. Lately, it hasn't been unusual for the Russians to lose a thousand people and dozens of armored vehicles in a single day.